Ah, computer viruses. These parasitic applications are somehow both a cancer to society and a part of my childhood nostalgia at the same time. I often think back to the time when I tried to convince my friend to run a little virus I made called Joke.Bat. Yeah, not the most subtle name. It basically would just open the same window up a bunch of times and crash your computer. Needless to say, uh, uh, he didn't fall for it. But still, we like to joke about Joke.Bat to this day. And this got me thinking, maybe I could recreate my infamous Joke.Bat, but this time Time, turn it into a game in Scratch. Now I know what you're all thinking, another Scratch video. But here's the thing, I'm currently busy wrapping up my Metroidvania Do Drop Dynasty, which you can wishlist here on Steam. But that also means I don't have a lot of free time at all. Would I rather be making a game in 6502 assembly right now? Maybe. But that will have to wait until after my game releases. And to be honest, Scratch is a ton of fun to work with. So today we're going to make a virus, I mean we're going to make a game about viruses in Scratch. But first, we need a game idea. So I went to my little sketch pad and I just started to play around with what would be a fun game about a virus. I then had the greatest game idea, almost as if I had played it in my childhood but totally forgot about it and thought it was my own original idea. And the idea is this, you got a desktop and these pop-ups keep, well, popping up. Your goal is very simple, you gotta close out as many of them as you possibly can before your computer crashes. Easy, right? So I quickly jumped into Scratch and tried spamming as many Scratch cats as Scratch would let me do. That's a whole lot of Scratch. Turns out Scratch is actually pretty optimized, which is pretty cool. After I made these cats randomly spawn in the map, I also made it so you could click them to get rid of them because that's kind of how you get rid of a pop-up. I made this special spawner sprite that basically just spawns in the pop-ups or AKA the cats. I then played around with a variable to make sure that as time progresses, the spawn rate increases. So the game gets a little bit more challenging as time goes on. It was at this point I realized I'm the biggest underachiever ever because the gameplay was done at this point. So it was time for me to hop over to Affinity Designer and design the look and feel of the game. Now personally, since I grew up in the early 2000s, I have a soft spot for Windows XP, especially that 3D pinball game for Windows with Space Cadets or whatever it was called. So it only felt natural to try to recreate that old aesthetic of Windows XP. I designed a basic wallpaper and a start button with a legally distinct logo, so don't at me. And of course, last but not least, a recycling bin. I don't know whose desktop other than mine actually looks like this in real life, but it's refreshing to see an empty desktop. With that said, it's time to design some pop-ups. I made some system errors, some loading bars, some command prompts, all sorts of scary things that would pop up during a virus. And uh, these actually kind of stressed me out looking at these. So after making all this, it was time to throw the new artwork into the game. Though, as always, I had some weird issues with the vector files not importing properly into Scratch. This happens every time, and I've been critiqued on how to properly import this. So this time, I'm just gonna do PNGs. So enjoy these crusty low res sprites. Also, pop-ups need to actually like pop up. So I made them when they spawn in, they actually pop. And when you click them, they fade away almost like a real desktop. It's amazing. This is also a minor tweak, but I made sure that all the pop-ups spawn inside of the screen. It's kind of annoying when they were like half off the screen. It just made it harder to click. I then created a score system with a custom font so you could see how many pop-ups you've exited out of. I don't know about you, but I this is the part I always dread with Scratch. Font is just, it's, it's no good. So our little virus game is coming along well, but something is missing. Something so critical that every true virus would have, and that's sound. And after digging around on the internet for a little bit, I was able to track down some very nostalgic, though slightly terrifying sounds, like these. I then threw the sounds in the game and randomized them, and it, it works, they're obnoxious. And finally, I created a basic game over screen and a title page that, uh, you know, that pays homage to that little virus I created as a kid. And that's pretty much it. That's the game, if you could even call it one. I don't know how many grown men are trying to recreate viruses in a kid's software for fun, but I guess I'm one of them. And if for some reason you actually want to play this game for yourself, there'll be a link in the description and let me know what your best high score is. And if you have any quick coding challenges you'd like me to do, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you're looking to make games yourself and don't know where to start, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, data, analysis, programming, and AI. And one thing I really like about it is Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Not to mention that Brilliant makes it easy to learn anywhere right on your phone, with fun lessons that you can do whenever you have the time. Whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session, you can always level up on the go in just minutes. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great 
way to build foundations and learn real world applications. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag and drop editor. Learn essential coding elements from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. And most importantly, develop your mind to think like a programmer and begin to write complex programs to build games and applications. I mean, hey, yep, you got me at games. With that said, if you don't know where to start, Brilliant is a great start. And to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash goodgist or scan the QR code on screen, or you can just click the link in the description. There's, there's plenty of ways, people. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so check it out. The next couple months are gonna be crazy for me trying to wrap up Dewdrop. It's gonna be exciting, and I'm so excited to share all the updates with you. So stay tuned as things are gonna be happening soon. It also means that there might be a little bit of hiatus here on the channel for a little bit. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.